Today, we're going to be using this ESP8266 to create fun and legal Wi-Fi hacking games to test your Wi-Fi hacking skills on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When you first get started learning Wi-Fi hacking, it can be tempting to use your powers on Wi-Fi networks that you don't have permission to. And this can get you in a lot of trouble because Wi-Fi hacking isn't particularly subtle and it is easy to get caught. Now, to make sure you don't get in trouble, we at Nullbyte want to make sure you have access to a couple fun Wi-Fi hacking games to play with, and all you need to follow along is at least one of these ESP8266-based D1 mini modules. Now you can pick these up for as low as $3 and as high as maybe $12 on Amazon. So make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to grab one of these and follow along. Now we're going to be referencing a couple of different guides we've already done on Nullbyte, but the common theme among them is that can be, they can be used to create fun Wi-Fi hacking games for a CTF, a hackerspace, or just a group of friends that want to practice their skills. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need a computer that is ready to program a D1 Mini. You'll need Arduino IDE installed, or at least a command line terminal with Python installed. And you'll also need at least one D1 Mini. And if you want to play the Chicken Man game, you'll also need two Raspberry Pis. Once you have that, then we can begin. Now today, we're going to go over a couple of different games that you can run on the ESP8266. In reality, there's five different scenarios here that we're really going to cover. Now the first one is if we want to practice a handshake cracking uh, attack, which would be recording a handshake and then attempting to crack it. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this, and the most dramatic way is with the Chicken Man game, which we'll get to a little bit later, and that requires us to have both uh, three, well I guess you could get away with two, uh, ESP8266s, one to create a network and one to join one, we can also create a handshake just by using the handshake injector, which uses a single ESP8266 to play back packets that have been pre-recorded. Now I've made this really easy for anyone who wants to follow along, so if you want to just download the binary file, all you need is a ESP8266 based development board, I recommend the D1 Mini, plugged into our computer. Uh, we'll open a terminal window and we will find which port it's connected to. And then we're going to flash these binary files over so we can get it to do various things like create a Wi-Fi access point, make a reactive target, or in this case, the handshake injector. All right, so the basic process is going to be, is going to be first we need to identify the port that the device is connected to. So in Linux, if I type DMESG, I should see that it is connected to TTY USB 3. Now this might vary for whatever operating system you're on. And if you're on Windows, you'll have to go into the device manager. In Mac OS, you can type LS space dev slash SU uh, with an asterisk after, and that should bring up the port it's connected to. But either way, you'll need to find this port because that will be key to the rest of our steps. Now we're going to go ahead and flash over this firmware and the commands for doing this are pretty straightforward. They're going to be using the ESP tool. And if you don't already have this, the ESP tool can be installed with pip. I believe it can be installed uh, in Linux with just apt sudo since I'm in uh, Ubuntu. There we go. And as you can see, you can go ahead and install the ESP tool, which will allow us to interact with ESP8266 based devices and directly flash over a binary rather than needing Arduino IDE. Now, of course, we can use Arduino IDE to also monitor the serial port. And also, if we want to actually modify these scripts, go in and change the stuff, compile it ourselves and upload it. But this is kind of the end step of what Arduino IDE does. So if we already have the file we want to flash pre-compiled, we can just go ahead and flash the binary over directly. Now I'm going to go ahead and look back through my history commands. And if you want to do this, if you've been working with it recently, you can type history, the pipe symbol, and then grep ESP tool. And here we're going to go ahead and copy one of the ones I used before, which is kind of a easy way of remembering these if you can't. And what we're going to do is call esptool.py, tac p, which is port, and we'll specify there the port that it's connected to. That is TTY USB 3. We're going to do the write flash command. Then we have the uh, fmd out, uh, the memory position we're starting at. 
And then we have the actual binary file that we're flashing over. So we're going to start out by taking a look at the various files that are included. And to follow along, you can go ahead and start on the GitHub, click on clone or download, and just download the zip, or you can do a git clone if you'd like to as well from this link here. And when we have these files, we can go ahead and go to, we can go to ESP8266 games. And here we can see the variety of different bin files we have to flash. So the first one we're gonna do is the handshake injector. So back in our script, in a terminal window, I will go ahead and just drop this here so we have the file location, and I should be able to press enter, and that'll go ahead and flash this to our ESP8266 board. Now when this is done, it should immediately begin broadcasting a handshake, which we can listen to on Wireshark, capture, and then crack the handshake, provided we have the password somewhere in our brute forcing password list. And this is great to demonstrate how brute forcing works and only requires a single ESP to practice. Now, the second thing that we are going to practice is deauthing a client. And this means we don't want to attack an entire network, we just want to attack a single device on a network. So in order to set this up, we are going to use a different script. So we'll go back to the downloaded bin files and we're going to choose the reactive target. Now, if we just basically go back up here, we're going to use the exact same script, only this time we're going to go ahead and drop in the reactive target binary file. Now, what this will do is go ahead and upload, and we'll need a three color RGB LED or enough LEDs that are red, green, and blue, just three of them, uh, to be able to indicate the status of this reactive target. But once we have it plugged in, we'll be able to determine exactly whether or not we've successfully connected to a Wi-Fi network, and then if we have, if we are currently being kicked off. So let's say that you have a smartphone and you want to generate a uh, Wi-Fi access point. Uh, in this case, it's pre-programmed to one called Control with a capital C, and the password is Testy Test. Uh, as soon as it joins that network, it will turn green, and then it'll turn red anytime that it is being kicked off the network. Now, if something's wrong and it can't find the access point, it'll just turn blue, which means it hasn't been able to successfully connect, just to allow you to diagnose if this isn't working and preventing you from having a really frustrating CTF if the device never was able to connect in the first place. This should allow you to connect to an existing access point, or as I said, maybe an access point on your phone, like a hotspot you're creating, and attack the device that's connected to it and see exactly when you are succeeding. So it's a great way to teach people how to attack an individual device on a network without taking out any other devices on the network too. And you can even use a whole bunch of these to make sure that each person is attacking their own target and keep the chaos down if you're doing a larger workshop. Next up, let's say that we actually want to get a little bit more into this and attack an entire network. Well, we can add another bin file. In this case, it is going to be uh, one of the default Arduino ones. And actually, it is not here, but if we go on the GitHub, because I add it later, it's going to be the Wi-Fi access point. And we can view the, no, we can't view the raw file here because it's a binary. But anyway, we'll go ahead and save the file. And once it's done saving, we should be able to move that over as well, just the same way we have been. And what that will do is it will create an access point that the reactive target will automatically join. So here, we'll go ahead and queue up our command. We'll drop in this file. So let's say that we have two ESP8266s now. The first one is set up as the reactive target, and the second one is now being written to create a simple access point for it to join. We are now free to attack basically the client and the access point too, because we know that this is a dummy access point that we are not going to get in trouble for attacking, and nobody would be influenced or otherwise negatively impacted by us taking down this network. So if we want to practice taking down an entire network, I should be able to go to my network tab and look for nearby networks. And hopefully I'll see one that our test device would automatically connect to. There we go. As we can see here, the access point has appeared. And now we can expect that our reactive target would be automatically connecting it to it. Now, last up, let's say, well, next up, let's say we want to do a CTF game where we have a hidden Wi-Fi network. 
Well, we can do that too. If we want to go back to our files, we can also see that there is a hidden network generator. And this is a spin on the access point that we just created, where instead of making it visible, the only thing we're really changing is then the Arduino code, we're changing it to make sure that it can't be seen. And I can provide an example of what this looks like in Arduino, but for simplicity, we can go ahead and just drop this and it should go ahead and send the file over. And as soon as it is loaded, then we shouldn't be able to see this access point anymore, which is a great way to practice tools that will allow us to attack, let's say a hidden network. So if I want to go through and take a look at what's being changed here, this is the default sketch that we're actually loading that creates an access point. Uh, you can see the original one is ESP AP and there is no spoon. But if I go down here where it's creating the access point, oh, and I can see it's actually done here, um, and add one, one, this will first of all set it to channel one, but the second one makes it so that it is a hidden network that sets that variable to true which will make this a hidden Wi-Fi network with the access point name ESPAP. So if you want to practice getting the name of a hidden network and trying out all sorts of other cool attacks against a hidden network, this is a great way to do that. And now we should have flashed this over and there you go. We now have the hidden network game loaded on our ESP8266. Now, last up, if you really want to go for this and you have two Raspberry Pis, I highly recommend you check out the Chicken Man game. So the Chicken Man game is a Wi-Fi hacking CTF that allows you to use a couple of ESPs to create both a chicken and a chicken man. Now, what that means is the chicken is a hackable Wi-Fi access point where if you manage to crack the password, you'll be able to log in and actually score points. Now, the chicken man is a game piece that's constantly joining these networks and generating handshakes for you to capture as well as keeping score of who is in the lead and making sure that whatever team is winning is getting a nice little light show if you've got some NeoPixels to spare. Now we've done this game at a couple of different Wi-Fi hacking CTFs, and in general, the process is pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and download the Chicken Man game from the master GitHub repository at github.com slash skakar slash chicken man game. And if you want to just go ahead and upload the binary, it's also included in the file that I have on the one on the original uh, GitHub repository I showed you. So if you want to just run the flash version without opening it in Arduino IDE for all of its glory, you can simply take this file, go over to the terminal commands we've been doing, chop off the end and then drop in the new file. And this should be the fastest way to get started playing the Chicken Man game. Now this is going to finish flashing. And if you want to go ahead and check to make sure that this is working properly, you can always look at the serial output to make sure that it is accurately uh, displaying the information you want. In this case, it should, depending on whether it's a chicken or a chicken man, either be creating an access point or looking for access points. Now, in order to change a chicken to a chicken man, it looks like it's done. I'm going to first um, make sure that this is flashed successfully. OK, and this looks about what I was expecting for the access point. So I'll go ahead and exit from here. And if you want to, to monitor the serial output, you can use screen or you can use Arduino IDE. You can simply go into tools select the port and then press control shift M and that should get you the serial output if you want to monitor that there. Now, if you want to change this to a chicken man's and have this actually joining the access points uh, and creating the handshakes, then you'll need to make a small change by connecting the D7 pin to ground. But aside from that small change, this is virtually the same. So if you've got maybe three of these ESPs lying around, you can make two of them into access points that can be hacked. And the third will go ahead and join them as a chicken man, generate handshakes and keep track of who is in the lead. Go ahead and check these out if you're interested in doing a interesting and fun Wi-Fi hacking CTF in your area, because it's a great way to get started teaching people about how Wi-Fi is insecure and needs to be fixed without getting in trouble actually breaking into someone else's Wi-Fi yourself. While the D1 Mini might be small, it can be used with the games we've gone over today to practice deauthing an individual device off a network, crack handshakes, or attack a hidden network. That's pretty cool, and for such a small price, it's easy to set up a Wi-Fi hacking CTF wherever you want to practice. 
That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to check out the link in the description if you want to buy one of these D1 minis or if you need any help setting it up. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kenzie because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.